A few months ago, I mentioned that I had obtained a copy of a hard-to-find software artifact, the Apple II version of Corel the Robot. This was an educational product designed by Richard Pattis that taught the concepts of procedural programming. Corel uses a Pascal-like language to move a robot through a virtual world, navigating mazes and picking up items. Through some magic and the help of software preservationist 4AM and others, I managed to image the Carol disks and upload them to archive.org. However, because of some oddities of Apple Pascal and probably some copy protection, actually running the software requires a little bit of elbow grease. In this video, I'm going to briefly explain what you need to do if you want to use it. My emulator of choice, Virtual 2, doesn't always work perfectly when dealing with Apple Pascal disks. A commenter told me that this is also true of AppleWin, the most commonly used emulator on Windows. So step one, if you're on a Mac, is to download the Open Emulator program. And by the way, I'll be putting all links mentioned in this video in the description. If you would prefer to build the project from source code, you can find the project on GitHub and download it there. Note that there is a different project called OpenEmu. That's not the one you want. You want Open Emulator. Then go to archive.org and grab the Corel the Robot zip file. That contains the software. The PDF or PDF with text links down, uh, contain all the documentation that came with the original software. Lastly, if you actually want to write your own Corel programs, you'll need to grab version 1.1 of UCSD Pascal. This is also available from archive.org. The Corel disks don't have their own editor, so the documentation recommends transferring the system editor from the UCSD Pascal disks onto the Corel disks. At this point, let's take a quick look around by booting up the Corel disk. I have the Corel 1 disk in drive 1, and the UCSD Pascal Disk 1 version 1.1 in Drive 2, so that I can use the editor. Let's take a look at what's on this disk. In order to use Corel, you'll need to learn a little bit about how the UCSD Pascal runtime works, and that's beyond the scope of this video. But let's take a quick look at the contents of the disk, edit a file, and then run one of the example programs. All file utilities are reached through the file menu. So I'm going to hit F here. The disks are going to grind a little bit and we have a bunch of options. There's an option not visible here, which is V. And if I type V, I'll see which volumes are online. L will ask us to give a volume. I'm going to say Corel zero or excuse me, just Corel colon. And we can see that there's a program called Corel.code, which is our main Corel the Robot program. We have a bunch of system disks, but no editor, sadly. And then we have these text files and WOL files. The KRL.txt files are Corel programs, and WOL are world definition files. So let's return to the root of the UCSD Pascal system by hitting Q. And now let's edit a file with E. The editor is going to load from the system Pascal disk and it wants to know what file we want to edit. I'm going to edit stair.krl.txt. And this is now our screen editor. The screen editor is very functional, but a little confusing. The Apple II Plus had right and left arrow keys, but it did not have up or down arrow keys. So to go down, we use Control L. And to go up, we use Control O. If we are in insert mode, which we reach by typing I, you can now type characters and they'll go in here. If we want to abort, we hit the escape key. If we want to commit whatever changes we've made, we're going to type the ETX key. Now, what is the ETX key? Um, that's the ASCII code for end of text, which it turns out is control C. Um, I've been using computers for 40 years, and I don't think I've ever heard anyone refer to control C as ETX, but 
the Corel the Robot, and I presume the Apple Pascal manuals do that. All right, so now that we've looked at this program, I'm not gonna make any changes, but you can see that this is a fairly simple language. Um, the manual is very straightforward about it, and it focuses on procedural programming. Um, I know right now functional programming is all the rage. Before that, for many years, we talked about object-oriented programming. Before object-oriented programming really was a thing, the hotness was procedural programming, which is just the idea that you're going to take a complicated problem and break it down into smaller pieces. I know, why would you need to even give that a name? People felt they did, and Corel was viewed as an... Uh, 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 an introductory way to explain that concept to people without programming experience. All right, so now I'm going to hit Q to quit back to the main menu. Uh, I'm going to exit without updating. Yes, I want to throw away those changes. And now we're back at the Pascal main menu. Let's actually run Corel. So we're going to run it. We're actually going to execute it. In Apple Pascal, run means compile and run because the assumption is you're actually writing your own code. So we're going to hit execute to execute an already compiled program, corel.code. So now we're in the Corel simulator. I'm going to hit the return key to advance. And now we're being asked, what Corel program do we want to load? So if your emulator doesn't work with Corel or Apple Pascal, this is where that bug will, uh, will evince itself. You'll type in what program you want to load, and it will kick you back out to the Apple Pascal main menu. Uh, but I believe this emulator, open emulator, should work. So I'm going to load stair.corel.txt. And it's going to parse the program that we just saw. You could see that it's drawing a distinction here between uh, begin and end blocks and program definitions or uh, procedure definitions and actual primitive commands. It counted those primitive commands, gives you a little data about your syntactical errors if you had any. I'm going to hit return to advance. And now we're ready to load our world. Now, Corel includes a complete world builder, so you could actually design your own scenarios if you want to. I'm not going to get into that. We're just going to read from a file. And we're going to take the default here, which it picked up from the name of the Corel program, stair.world. And here we are, ready to execute our program. So there's some options here on how to run the program. If we choose explain, um, it will actually walk through as many steps at a time as we want, as few as one. Um, so you could actually see it enter a procedure, enter a begin end block, execute a primitive instruction one step at a time, just like with a debugger. Um, I'm going to choose automatic in this case, and uh, let's choose medium execution speed, which I promise you will be probably painfully slow. Uh, regular sticky mode, uh, if you choose sticky, it will leave a trail where Corel was in the past. I'm going to choose regular. We're ready to go. Let's hit enter and let's watch. Corel executed a turnoff instruction. He has, he or she or it, has correctly climbed uh, a few stairs and picked up a few beepers. And our first Corel program is finished. So that's how you run Corel the robot. It does take a little more el elbow grease than running uh, your average, not copy protected Apple II software. If you're interested in the history of programming languages, Corel is you know, it's essential. Uh, an entire generation of programmers went through CMU and Stanford and Berkeley learning Corel. Is it worth your time to spend uh, 
learning Corel yourself? Well, there's not a lot to learn, first of all, so we're not talking about a lot of time. And there are more modern versions of Corel uh, that aren't tied to the Apple Pascal simulator. Um, I think the real value of this is as an artifact of that era of computing. Uh, we very often forget how far tools have advanced. And uh, I'm very happy that I was able to preserve this uh, in, in some, uh, some small contribution. So thanks a lot. Uh, if you're a Windows user and you discover which Windows, editor, uh, which Windows emulator will run this correctly, I would really love to hear from you in the comments and I'll uh, update the show description to include that information if, uh, if you're able to figure it out. Thanks so much. Thanks for watching. <laughs>